I think that's so, a very important yeah. point because right. we don't realize that there's solar winds that's blowing across, that's right. the magnetic fields that come across, and if it blows too much, yeah. our entire telemetry and everything else will be disturbed. That's right. yeah. And so you're studying the behavior. One of the things you're studying is looking at the behavior of the corona that's and right. uh, the solar wind process that is in there, right? Yeah, yeah. And also heating of the corona. The gas in the corona is a million degree Kelvin. A million Actually, degrees. Yeah, that is the same temperature as inside the sun. The surface of the sun is about few thousands, five thousand. But how okay. did you heat up the gas just outside it to a million? So the, the scientific world... And then it gets hotter is, apparently, it goes to 15,000 degrees centigrade as yeah, it moves into the corona. Yeah, then chromosphere and then corona. So the corona is a very thin gas, very hot gas. Just, so to give you, is, yeah, so. just to give you an idea of the temperature, steel melts at what, a thousand degrees uh, centigrade? Yeah. So you're going at 15 times, and therefore any spacecraft, if it gets too close to it, will just it, yeah, yeah, vanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am I right? That's <laughs> right, yes. So yeah. let's come to you, Nigel. What is the... You know, we built Chandrayaan, we had a lander, we had a rover, highly successful. We failed the first time, but second time we came back with glorious results. What's the degree of difficulty, and what is it that you specialize in when you look at Aditya? What is the area that you... Apart being project director, what is the degree of difficulty in this process of yeah. reaching the sun? Because yeah. then you have the experiments, but before that... Yeah, actually, uh, we are uh, doing it for the first time. We are going to this Lagrangian point around L1. When you, you know Lagrangian point is the, it's an imaginary point where the gravitational pull of both the sun and the earth balances and it acts as a, a small force. So having a spacecraft around it, it's the first time we are trying. So the spacecraft need to balance between the pull of the uh, sun and the earth and has to be around that. So that's a real challenge. Mission management is the real challenge in Aditya L1. And it's, uh, you can visualize like a ball on the hill top. So if you don't balance, either it can move towards the either side, that is towards the sun or towards the earth. So there, that's the first time we are, it's, uh, uh, it's also a three-body uh, three uh, problem and also it is, uh, the orbit also is a three-degree three-dimensional orbit. So it's not a perpendicular plane or anything. That orbit will be wobbling and it is a three-dimensional one. So such a thing we are uh, trying for the first time. That's the biggest challenge. And also the instruments, what they have developed, it requires a very high pointing accuracy to do look at the sun. So for that we have made special sensors so that we will maintain that pointing accuracy, what the instruments demands. So these are all the major two challenges. Apart from that, spacecraft making, any spacecraft making is a big challenge. So because it involves a lot of complex engineering and uh, science. So that way, these two are the major challenges. Well, yeah, I mean, you've put it very well. I'm, it could be a physics lesson in some senses, but the fact is that even to get to that precision point, it's like, uh, you know, firing a one rupee coin at some great distance and trying yes. to hit it, right? I mean, it has to be so precise. If it just moves a little this side, you lose the spacecraft. Yes. Am I right on this one? Yes. But let's come to the other part of this, which is women and space exploration. And uh, we'll begin with you, Anapurni. Uh, both of you all come from small towns, right? You come from Palakkad, that's in Kerala, and you come from Tenkasi, that is in Tamil Nadu. What, when you took it up, why, why did you take to space or uh, astrophysics in this particular thing. Was there resistance from your family? Your family was, were musicians, I'm told your father and mother were uh, very good players of this. Why didn't you take to, to art and, uh, you know, why didn't you take to art and not science? Yeah, so uh, I grew up in Palakkad and one of the things which I still cherish when I was a small child was looking up at the night sky. And we had the privilege of looking at the night sky and seeing the stars. I don't think any of this younger generation have this privilege. And if I have to tell them that how beautiful the sky is, they just stare at me, where can I go and see it? Right? So uh, that's a very sad situation. But two things happened when I was in a remote place and also too we had power cuts. Nothing to do. You have to go out, you have to watch the sky. And that really inspired me. Halley's Comet and the constellations and so many things out there totally inspired me. At home, I breathed music because my parents are musicians and all the time music in and out. You actually play the violin and Yeah, I am a yes. Carnatic violinist as well. <laughs> so we can't escape music at home. But I, I was very passionate about doing science. My parents were not against me doing science, but they were not, they were kind of not very happy me doing engineering though. So pure science, they didn't have a problem, but it's just all up to me because I had a plan B that was always music, but then I thought if I take music, I will not be able to continue science. But if I take science, I can continue music. 
So I decided to do that and then continued science. And why astronomy? Didn't your parents have any issues with astronomy? But give a warm round of applause for that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, astronomy. Did your parents have any objection to astronomy? Yeah, you said no, engineering, no. they were not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but when I took up astronomy, uh, they, they, they said fine. But then I told them that I'm going to do look at the night sky and spend time, you know, hours together or days together, weeks together in the observatory. A few days later, my mom came and told me, how about do, studying the sun? You see, the sun rises up in the sky in the, in the morning and then sets in the west in the evening. Isn't that, isn't that a better way to study the stars or whatever? I didn't understand what she's uh, aiming at because she didn't have any idea about anything. So then I realized that as a girl child, she didn't want me to go and spend time in the observatory. At so, night. you know, at night. <laughs> so the good thing would be to study the sun. The only way to overcome that was to take them there right. and show them. So what is the observatory like? How does it, things work there? Why I'm passionate about it? Show them and actually I shared my passion with them and how happy I'm doing that. That really changed the whole scenario.